What's good, y'all? Welcome to NHL 25 and welcome to the nation's capital here in Washington, D.C. And we are here for a few reasons, and I'll get into that in a moment, but I think we have to take a look at the obvious to start. Look at this brand new NHL 25 franchise mode. Finally, EA Sports has put in some effort on the franchise mode department. And this is my first time being on here myself. I have seen, you know, a few other people check this mode out already, but this is my first time exploring this. So I think we got to start with that, of course. Uh, and let's go through a couple of new things they added. So firstly, you can see here, um, obviously, just completely streamlined, new hub, new graphics, everything is much more clean. And the biggest thing for me is that it is much more easier to navigate. Instead of having to tab over to everything and having to go right a bunch to get to what you want, you can just go one tab, you just go up and down here, and you can get to whatever you need. Whether it be, you know, your conversations, your rosters, trading, all that stuff, contracts. And we will get into all that in a second. And actually, you know what? I do want to start out with contracts because this is one of the major focus points of NHL 25's franchise. And you can see it right over here at the start. The no movement and no trade clauses have been officially added. And it's something that I think we've needed for a while. But um, I am glad we do finally have that. If we take a look just at Alex Ovechkin, for example, uh, you know, he has a tradable team list here of 22 teams. Uh, it shows when his contract's expired. Uh, just everything, every piece of information you need to know about this. And, of course, I guess I kind of just skip right to it, but this is the other new major addition, the awards section. So, finally, we actually have some stat tracking, uh, some award tracking, and speaking of stat tracking, I will get to that right in a moment as well. But yes, the no movement clauses have been added as well as the trophy case. And I guess a deeper dive into the new movement clauses here as we can go to free agency. Uh, so actually, when you sign free agents, and this is for the offseason as well, uh, there is an organizational interest as well as uh, if you dive into the contracts here. Yeah, I know how to do all this shit. Uh, right here. So you can choose your clause base. So it can be a no movement clause, no trade clause, modified no trade clause, you know, just any, anything. And, uh, you know, it might take some time for me to get used to that and to, uh, to know what I'm doing there. But you can see on the right as well, it says team interest, current offer, and it'll show the blue bar right there, the contract and the organization. So, uh, if you get those bars up there, that'll give you more chance to sign for agents. And I think this is a good thing too, because... In previous games, if you just offer Freedance enough money, they'll just come to your team no matter what. And that's not necessarily how it works in the NHL. Some teams, or some players, I should say, like to go to a certain team for, you know, maybe it's their hometown. They want to play with a certain player if you're a Stanley Cup contender. So there's multiple different reasons there. But this allows you to have a little bit more realism and it doesn't allow you just to steal every free agent. You know, it gives you a bit of a challenge. So I like that. And uh, as I said, stat tracking earlier, if we can go... Um, I don't know if it will... I actually don't even know where this is. Um, <laughs> probably should have knew that before I even, you know, tried to show that off. Oh, it might be in here. Um, nope. Um, where can I view this, actually? Let me actually... Where do I open the calendar at? Uh, square. Maybe it is under this section here. So I'm kind of just learning as I go as well. So, um, can I click on... Okay, today. Well, let me, uh, let me send a preseason game real quick just to show you guys. Uh, oh, okay. Well, <laughs> already a conversation here with our coach. So let's see. Hello, GM Meech. This season, we have a great opportunity to fo focus on winning and run this team the way we want. Let's establish our goals and strive for success in every game. Okay, so uh, looks like we can have a season goal here, and I think you can do the same thing with your players. Now, I know with the players, you don't have to conversate with every single one. It's just the ones that maybe want to give a morale boost or, um, you know, extra motivation. Now, I do have player morale turned off. I usually always do. So I don't know how effective this is going to be, but uh, we'll find out here. So uh, I can just leave it up to him if I want. Uh, season goal, uh, preseason. Let's just set a season goal. Let's just see what we got here. Uh, looking at the roster on paper, there are some kinks to work out, but this team is good enough to compete for a playoff spot. That is my goal for this team. Um, honestly, I agree. Uh, and I'll get into all this in a second. Uh, thank you for your vote of confidence. This could be the start of something great. All right, cool. So I'll get into what our team's plan and all that is. Don't worry. Uh, we will get into what the plan for this franchise mode, this plan for this team this year is, uh, all that. But I just want to go over the new features because I think it is important. 
and uh, you know, I want to explore this myself. I want to be able to know what I'm doing. So if I hit triangle today, okay, that's just that. Can I click on... Man, where do I open this at? I've seen other people have like a... Uh, let me see, stat central. Let me just go in here. Yeah, we already did that. Okay, it's not under there. Um, activity feed? Nope, that's your message center. Okay. Uh, box scores, it might be right here. Yep. Okay, so... This is very cool to me because I think this will really help with storylines and seeing how a certain player or line is uh, producing. So they finally have added box scores, which, I mean, I know it seems like that should have been in the game years ago, and it probably was, like, many, like, PS2 era probably. But um, pretty much every other sports game has this, you know, integrated into their games. But NHL finally has caught up. And you can actually go into every score. You can see every score for that day. And you can actually see uh, everyone's points, all their stats, literally everything. Finally, you can actually view everything in here. Uh, you can just go by who scored right here. I mean, it's the same thing if you go to a game, uh, if you slow sim a game, and then after you see the box score. But now you can actually see not only your own team's past box scores, but the entire league. So that will help with a lot of things as well. And I think it's just the more information, the better, honestly. Uh, whatever it is there is to help this game, I think they should add it. And they have just done that this year, at least a little bit. So um, I think those are the main um, new additions. I can uh, just go to a regular player conversation here just to see what this is like. Hey, GM, each preseason's grinding along, ready for our chat. What do you want to talk about? So this is with, of course, our captain, Alex Ovechkin. Uh, let's... So you can chat about a season goal, on ice play, clause option, wave. We'd like to... Okay, we definitely don't want to do that with him. Uh, let's just set a season goal with him. Um, let's just go long term. And I think with Alex Ovechkin, you got to go with goal scoring. So stat challenge, goals, 50. Okay, I did not see that. <laughs> uh, we just challenged damn near 40-year-old Alex Ovechkin to get 50 goals this year. So... Uh, we'll see how that ends up. Honestly, with the way he sims in this game, I would not be surprised if he hits that mark. And uh, I guess speaking of Alexander Ovechkin and goals, I think we should talk about uh, our team here, the Washington Capitals. So uh, there's two main reasons why I wanted to use this team. Uh, obviously, well, I guess three. Obviously, the one you want is to win a Stanley Cup, of course. But the two main reasons, Washington specifically. Uh, one, I think it would be really fun to chase history, of course, talking about Alex Ovechkin and the NHL goals record. Actually, I know a better way to look at this. Uh, this was just... Was the record broke last year, two years ago? I know it was a really recent ad. Um, but uh, we can take a look here. Most goals. So Alex Ovechkin, 853. That is... Oh, yeah, because he's 42 away from breaking it. Yes, that's right. Uh, Wayne Gretzky with 894 and Alex Ovechkin with 853. So he is at 41 goals from tying the record and 42 from breaking the record. Now, in real life... I predict that if he is going to break the record, it's going to be the season after this, so the 25-26 season. Um, I mean, I wouldn't put it past, you know, Ovi to put 42 in this year, but I think he's going to be more around 25-35 at most. Um, obviously, now, personally, Alex Ovechkin is my favorite player of all time, so I would love to see him break the record this year. But um, if we're thinking realistically, at least in my opinion, I think it's going to be next year, but... What do I know? Maybe he can just sit in his office the whole year, just sit two minutes on the power play and just wax him in. So we'll have to see what happens there. But uh, in this simulation, I think it's definitely going to happen. And I wouldn't be surprised if this if it is this year because uh, he always he, it doesn't matter if he bump his overall down or as long as he has his X factors, he always simulates very well in this game. So uh, we're going to hope for that for this year. And uh, the other reason with Washington is I think it's a team that needs direction because after Ovi leaves, I mean, it is inevitable that this team has to rebuild. I already think that they probably should, um, but I understand why they're trying to still compete. Uh, just because, you know, within Ovi's window, you still want to try to give him another cup. Because, in my opinion, that 2018 cup race, I mean, I think it's second to only Ray Bork in 01 in terms of significance and uh, just how iconic it was, man. I mean, maybe I am biased. I mean, he is my favorite player, and after all the playoff hardship, Seeing him losing the second round every time, all the criticism, finally be able to lift the cup there in Vegas was just such a special moment. But uh, nonetheless, uh, yeah, this team is 
in a very weird position, no doubt. And I think this is, would be a perfect team to take over. You know, it's a team that is kind of on the tail end of a um, playoff window. Um, but uh, I think after the OV era is done, it'll be a fun team to rebuild. And uh, we'll have a you know look up and down the roster as well. So we ha have uh, OV, Dylan Strom, and Tom Wilson on the first line as it's set right now. Um, I guess with Tom Wilson, I should address that there are a couple of really rough-looking contracts on this team. Okay, Tom Wilson, one of them being at over $60 million for the next seven years, already 30 years old and only an 83 um, on this. I should mention I am using a custom roster. Uh, you probably would already be able to tell because OV is an 89 at the starting rosters, but uh, this custom roster, we got some added prospects. We got some updated overalls, X-Factors, all that stuff, just a little bit more accurate and uh, gives us a bit more realism as well. So, um, yeah, so Wilson is one, and then, of course, the obvious one, Pierre-Luc Dubois, who they just traded for this offseason, making over $8 million for seven more years, at also an 83. Now, the good thing with Dubois, he is still only 26, so he does have some years left in him. I just don't know how he's going to produce. And uh, the other thing is, I don't just want to ship out this contract because... If the trade system is anything like the last few games, I could probably, like, let me see, uh, fine trade. I can probably offer him up. He can probably give him for, like, a third or fourth and get his contract out of here. But I feel like that's just such a cop-out, and that's not even fun, like, at all. Uh, unless his value just completely is tanked, which uh, which I wouldn't be surprised. Let me just sort by contract here. Uh, wow, okay, yeah, he does have a sliver of value. Can I even get anything for him? Um, is this not fine trade? Can I not? Is he? Wait. Oh, wait, yeah. No movement clause means you can't trade him. I forgot about that. Wait, but Ovi has one. Huh. Maybe I don't understand. Um, I don't really... Because no movement means I can't... So is no movement with a no trade clause meaning, like, he doesn't want to be moved, but if he had to... Or maybe he signed a no movement clause, couldn't be moved at the start, and now he can... So let me try... Is there anybody else with just a full no movement clause? There isn't. Okay. Uh, what about goalies? No. So, if I I mean, I probably should know what I'm talking about. I think a no movement clause means I literally cannot trade him if he just has a straight up no movement clause. Because it doesn't even show me any teams. It just... Yeah, and then it evolves to 15 no turn. So, yeah, we can't even just dump his contract for the next three years. Which, I mean, is fine. I wasn't planning on trading him right away. Like I said, I think that'd be a cop-out. And they just... They literally just traded for him, so why would I get rid of him? They don't have... It's not like they traded him just to flip him. So, uh, yeah. And I'll get into what my plans are for him uh, in a moment, but um, I did want to look at... Actually, you know what? Let's go to the uh, view contract screen to look at this. So, um, yeah. So, Dylan Strom... Um, or actually, you know what? Let's just go in order here. Uh, oops, did not mean to do that. Uh, John Carlson... Uh, Carlson has been their number one blue liner for the last, like, what, 10, 15 years. Uh, alternate captain, of course. Still a good offensive defenseman. Obviously, defensively, uh, he is pretty lacking. I think 88 defensive awareness is kind of a bit high for him there. But, um, yeah, just a pure offensive defenseman. Can get you, like, 40, 50 points still, probably at 34. Um, he'll probably sim well in this game. I mean, look at all those X-Factors and... If he's going to be playing with Ovi, who's probably going to get a lot of goals still, he'll probably still put up like 50 points at least. So uh, he has seven and a half for the next two years. So I'm not worried about that. Uh, he can just retire a capital at this point. I think he's deserved it. Uh, I don't have any reason to move on from him. Uh, Dylan Strom, he's been kind of a bright spot for the Capitals the last few years, despite, uh, you know, wavering success in terms of playoffs and uh, just in general, but he's actually locked up for the next four years at under five million, and for an eighty-six, I think that's a great contract. Um, I plan on using him as our first line center this year still, so um, hopefully producing with Ovi will help him jump or keep that eighty-six, and uh, he should be a solid player for us moving forward. Of course, uh, Jacob Chikrin is another guy they just acquired this off season. A uh, very solid defenseman, eighty-five overall at twenty-six years old, uh, making only four point three million, and just for this year, so. Uh, we'll have to decide what we want to do with him. Uh, Matt Roy. I think Matt Roy is a pretty underrated defenseman. I think 84 is a bit low for him. I would have given him more maybe like 85, 86. Uh, but nonetheless, solid top four option. Um, he does have a uh, 
10 team no trade clause and next well okay it starts at 15 for this these two years and then moves down to 10 but he's actually locked up until 29 30 making about five and a half million which isn't bad i just worry that at an 84 at five and a half at this game it might not be as good but um he uh he's gonna get top four minutes regardless so hopefully he can uh keep that 84 maybe jump a bit and we'll have to see what we decide to do with him because i think after uh Ovi retires, he might be a trading piece considering his age in our window. So uh, we'll see if we can get some value out of him. Obviously, I already mentioned about uh, PLD there. So we have uh, Martin Ferivari here, uh, young defenseman, 83 overall. Doesn't only have high top six, but that could move up to like a medium four or something. Uh, but yeah, he's solid. Uh, two and a half million for the next two years. So don't have to worry about that uh, in terms of, you know, a bad contract or nothing. So. Uh, like I said, it, that'll probably be the top four right there. Carlson, Chikorin, Rory, and Ferivari. So uh, we'll have to see how that plays out. And um, yeah, I mean, there's not going to be some long-term plan for every player on the team. You just got to kind of see what the uh, simulation gives you. Um, I guess I'll only do like the important players. So uh, Connor McMichael, uh, medium top six at 23. He's still got some time to grow. So I'm going to try to give him top six minutes and actually have an idea for our top six here coming up. Uh, same thing with Alexi Protus. Uh, he might get stuck on the third line for this year just because of uh, who we have to play in the top six. But we'll see how the lines shape up here in a second. And then, oh, yeah, I forgot about Rasmus Sandin. So um, he is signed just under $4.5 million up until 28-29. The thing is, I don't know where he's going to fit in on this team as of right now. Because it's either going to be... Uh, I think Chikorin and uh, Carlson is pretty, you know, the solidified top pair for this year. And then it's just about Roy, Ferivari, and Sandin. And obviously it looks like Roy is going to be on that right side. He's a right D. So we'll have to decide between Martin Ferivari and Rasmus Sandin in that aspect right there. Um, Ethan Bear is actually somebody who they just put on waivers in real life. And I should mention, too, this roster is about a week old. So there might be some PTOs that are outdated or just in general signings, any of that. So, um, but it's nothing that's going to affect the sim too much. So I actually want to try out this, uh, <clears throat> um, where is Ethan Bear? I want to try out that wave conversation. Um, okay, I guess I can't even do that with him. Ah, okay. Um, didn't it say that for open to wave the contract? Uh, I might just have to, I don't really want to use a buyout spot, but I don't. Let me see where he's at. Uh, so, enter negotiation. Oh, maybe it's this. Charm neutral two-way. Okay, that's not it. Can I even buy a player out straight up now? Or is it like a... Uh, uh, or was it in that conversation? Let me look again. I'm pretty sure open a session neutral two-way. Okay, um, yeah, I don't know what that's about. I thought with the Obi conversation I could wave him, but I don't know what's different about Bear. I don't know. Maybe I did something different. Um, I might just leave him as a healthy scratch or something. You know, I don't, it's not a big deal to me. Again, it's not going to affect anything too much, but, um, yeah. I don't, I don't know what's going on with that. And then, obviously, in goal, or not obviously, but in goal we do have... Charlie Lindgren and Logan Thompson. So both 84s here, um, both listed as starting goalies. So I'm going to let them just kind of split starts, and uh, we'll see who becomes the better goalie. Both actually right-handed uh, catching. I don't know when was the last time two goalies, uh, starter and backup, had the uh, hand wrist hand catching of that's not even right. <laughs> both caught right-handed. That's the best way to put that. Uh, yeah, it's kind of different. But uh, let me get Ethan Bear out of the lineup just for now, just because he isn't on the team, like, at all. So uh, we'll put in TVR there. And, okay, so that third pair does have a minus one. So if I move up Sandy, okay. So we might play Faravari on that bottom pair. Um, Sandy does have the higher potential, too, so there is that. Um, but I think I'll try that out for now. So I said I did have an idea for the top six, and my idea is, and it might be a pretty controversial one, is to play PLD on that first line with Strom and Ovechkin. Now, the idea here is, um, let me kind of adjust this just for a second. Um, I'll just put, whoops, get you there. Uh, the edit lines menus are kind of still a bit slow, but 
you know, what are you going to do? So, uh, the idea with the top six here, so Ovechkin, one of the main goals for this franchise is to get him that goal record, of course. Um, I don't want to play another sniper on that line, so like uh, Andrew Mangiapane, even though he's listed as a second line forward, and PLD is listed as a third liner. But um, he has a playmaker and a power forward beside him. Now, you could argue that power forwards do score a lot of goals in this game, but um, I don't know if PLD will be one to do that. And as well, uh, the you know the chemistry is a plus two. Uh, let me see what it would be with... Okay, so it would be plus two there too as well, but... Uh, it actually does help the second line, though, with Mangiapane, McMichael, and Wilson. Give that a plus one. But, um, yeah, I did want to make sure Mike, McMichael got top six minutes and had to bump somebody up and somebody down. And Wilson went down the second line. Now, TJ Oshi, um, I know I'm kind of just jumping all over the place, but um, I do want to address this, that he is on LTIR right now. Uh, he's got some back issues that he's had for a while. In my personal opinion, I don't think he's going to be playing again. Um, so I am going to have him scratch for this year. And uh, he might retire at the end of the year. He might not. But um, I'll leave him scratch for this year. I don't see him playing, like I said. And um, yeah, I just... It's an unfortunate situation, obviously. Oh, she one of my favorite players growing up. And um, yeah, it just sucks to see like guys' careers end like that. Just out of nowhere, kind of. Well, not really out of nowhere, but... Um, abruptly, I should say. You know, they they want to end on their own terms, but sometimes injuries just prevent that, which is unfortunate. So, but you know, what can you do? Uh, so yeah, I'll leave him scratch there, and then I'll worry about the uh, specialty teams here in a second. And let's actually take a look at our AHL lineup here. So let's just go preferred lines. So I actually forgot they did sign Jacob Verana, but um, yeah, he hasn't really played that much the last couple of years. And his production has fallen off pretty heavily. Um, so, you know, the 78 is pretty fair. But, yeah, he might play in the uh, in the AHL. I mean, it sucks. But, I mean, just the way that this roster is shaped up. And, you know, I just don't see him playing um, in the NHL this year. Now, uh, Ivan Mirosachenko or Ivan. Um, could be mispronouncing that, but it's going to happen <laughs> in this series. It's just going to happen. Uh, Mir Sashenko, though, I think I do want to give him top line minutes in the AHL. Hopefully get him some good production. Um, Michael Scarbosa, now I know they did cut him, but I'm just going to keep him because there's no... I mean, he's just in the AHL. I'm just trying to help uh, Mir Sashenko. Um, I could throw Verona on that first line with him. I just don't want to take away from his production, but uh, we'll try him out there on the first line to start. And then let's move Borgstrom there. So we don't really have a lot of, like, top prospects. That's another thing with the Capitals. Um, them and the Penguins, really, which is funny because they're both, you know, with the Ovechkin versus Crosby and all that. Um, both of them do not have deep prospect pools at all. Uh, so that is going to be a tough part of this challenge is that we don't have a ton of, you know, superstars talent coming up through the, uh, through the minor leagues and uh, just in our pipeline in general for uh, young players. Uh, Vinny Iorio, top four defenseman, 21. He could get some growth, so I'll play him on the top pair. And then we got Clay Stevenson and Hunter Shepard here. Now, uh, the Hershey Bears actually uh, reigning back-to-back -back Calder champions, so uh, we'll have to look out to see if they can get a three-peat there. Not, you know, Hershey's not my main focus, of course, for the series, so just kind of to develop our young players mainly. Obviously, that's what most minor league teams are, but it would be cool to see if they can get a three-peat in there. Um, and then obviously, somebody you might not have seen uh, in terms of our top prospects here. Let me just uh, go to proposed trade here. It's of course going to be their first round pick from 2023, and that is... Okay, they're acting like I don't know how to trade players. Uh, where is he at? Uh, okay, we actually have a couple. I thought he would be pretty highly rated. Where is he? Uh, oh, did I miss him? Oh, he's literally at the top. Okay, uh, Ryan Leonard, who is a 75 overall power forward at 19 years old, medium elite potential. Now, he is unsigned, and you could make the argument that I could play him on that first line. I wonder if I do sign him, though, if it's going to send him down to juniors if I try to send him down. So I actually do... I think I do want to get him under contract, though, because I think him playing on that first AHL line could help a lot. So let me go to unsign here, and let's offer him a contract. Uh, just the standard, 
uh, you know, ELC. Uh, it looks like the uh, max ELC now is 975. Um, I believe it was either 925 or, yeah, I think it was 925. At least it has been for the last few years. So uh, we'll offer him that. Like don't jump be a full roster. So okay, nice. We have a full roster. So I'm actually just gonna trade away uh, Ethan Bear for a seventh round pick, uh, just to get him off the roster. I mean he's not even on our team. So let's get that out of the way real quick. Uh, Ethan Bear, and then I'll just scroll a few eyes closed. Give a random team. Uh, Minnesota Wild. All right. Enjoy the free player. Um, is there added? tabs to this or maybe not i don't think so uh it just looks like a lot of tabs for whatever reason but uh okay then i'm a seventh round pick this year okay there we go seventh round pick watch me not even take it oh my god you have too many players all right well i'll take oh, i'm going the wrong way uh skaters who has the lowest value brennan cons uh let me get like a shitter uh this guy 68 overall there you go Okay, I am an idiot. That doesn't clear the roster spot. <laughs> that is... That is great. Okay. Um, is there... Like, who is our lowest value guy or somebody? Um, this guy's not even signed. So let's get rid of this guy. Is there anybody that... There's not going to be anybody that wants him. Oh, wait. Did I say I don't want him? They do. And they actually have a contract spot. All right, perfect. Hopefully they take it for a seven. Um... And it, yeah, okay, nice. I am such an idiot, dude. Like, I, <laughs> I moved Ethan Bear and we fucking took another player. That's not gonna help. Uh, who can I give up real quick? Um, I don't want to get like I don't even know what to do. Can I buy somebody else out? Like, would it? It wouldn't let me buy out Ethan Bear, but let me scroll down here. Um, can I buy this dude out? How do you buy players out now? Is that like not a thing? Or do I have to do I have to have a conversation with them? Like what? Uh Okay, this dude. Dude, why can't I wave people? Or like didn't it say for Ovechkin to wave? Um okay, well this is an issue. <laughs> I am such an idiot. That was the perfect player to move to because he had value. And he's not on the team. Um, okay. Uh, how about Scarbosa? He's not on the team either anymore. I know I said I just want to keep him for the first line, but... Uh, does Florida have a roster spot? They do. Alright, can we get a 7th for him? I don't think it's going to work. What do you mean they have more than 40? They... Okay, whatever. Um, Pittsburgh, 50 out of 50. Does Seattle have a roster spot? Okay, they do. Just a bit. Alright, fine. I'll give you a 7 too. Jesus, just take him, please. So there we go. Kind of sucks that we have to give up one of our best AHL players, but he's not on the team, so... Uh, I guess that's fair. And that's what I get for trading Ethan Bear for another idiot. So uh, I'll just replace this uh, with just Hofer's fine for now. Um, okay, he's already nice. Like, <laughs> didn't it say he was scratched? Okay, can I? Dude, what is going on right now? Is this a bug? Okay, that whatever. Just, <laughs> just please let me sign ryan leonard jesus uh okay now that i have cleared a roster spot let's see if i can do this unsigned and all right bet so he has signed and let's get him in the ahl so let's replace him i have 260 overalls in here nice uh let's just play him on that top line now, do I have a playmaker? Okay, uh, this... Actually, this young dude, too. That could be... Yeah, there we go. We can do something like that, because... Um, or this dupe. Is it any different? No, actually, that dude's plus two. All right, perfect. So we'll have our... Uh, pretty much our best forwards... Forward prospects that we have. Uh, just playing in there. 
and then uh, this is fine like that. Uh, so there is uh, Ryan Leonard. We're going to play him on the first line of the AHL. And then let me make sure he actually gets power play time and all that. So he's in there. Uh, four man. He is in there, yeah. Chemistry looking rough, but um, yeah, I'm not too worried about this. Let me get uh, that young dude in here again, though. Uh, I think it's this dude. Yep. Uh, how do you say this dude's name? Suzdalev? God, that is probably way off, but... Suzdalev? I don't... I have no clue. Uh, put him in here. Alright, so we got those guys in on the power play. And then, yeah, so HL, like I said, I'm not, like, insanely worried about. I just want our top guys to, uh, to sim well and get some growth. So we'll leave all that like that. And then, uh, let's take a look at the NHL lines once again. So I think this forward core is good. Um, defensively, I think, yep, we already made our changes. All right, so let's get the power play. So, uh, Ovechkin, I mean, he just has to be in his office. Like, it just has to happen. And then I kind of like this setup. Um, is there anybody I wanted to add? Let's get Mangiapane as a one-timer side. He's a sniper. Um, let me see how the second one's looking. So we do have PLD here. Chikorin, yep. Okay, Lapierre. Isn't he a two-way? Yeah, I don't necessarily need him in here. Who else could we put in here? Radish Wilson's already in. Uh, oh, yeah, Protus. I uh, want to get Protus some power play time. Uh, he actually doesn't like the power play on our team, okay. Um, the question is, do I want to move up Dubois for Mangiapane? But I I don't think I do, because he's getting first line time. This will help balance the ice time out. Um, so yeah, I think that's fine. Uh, what about Sonny Milano? He is a sniper, okay. So I do want to leave him there. I think this is good. I mean, the chemistry isn't great, but I mean, I can't really do nothing about that. And then, love that, and let's see here, McMichael, PLD, I'm going to get Protus in instead of Milano, just to get some younger guys in. Uh, right there. Perfect, oh, okay, not perfect, minus five, but um, I'm not even worried about the chemistry too much. Hopefully it doesn't give a huge factor. And then, uh, penalty kill, that looks good. It's also not saying like Ovechkin in here, okay, good. Uh, yeah, that all looks good, all right. So, honestly, with this team, I don't know what I want to do yet in terms of uh, trades and all that. I just, it's going to be a weird team this year because I don't know how we're going to sim. And it, you might be thinking, like, oh, this team is shit. But in these games, that does not matter, man. These shit teams sim so well a lot of the time. Um, it just, this game is so random. At least the sim engine is, at least in previous games. I guess I can't speak for this game. I haven't played it yet. But um, if this is any. I, I assume the sim engine is pretty similar. And if it's anything like 24, 23, any of those games, it's going to be completely random. Uh, yeah, so I guess one thing I do want to look at before we look around the league as well, because uh, obviously if we are a shit team this year, we want to uh, have our sights set and we have the draft class. Okay, nice. So uh, I can almost guarantee you that this is a franchise player because the projected number one pick, James Hagens, is a, uh, I'm just going to spoil it, he is a high elite in this uh, roster. So, uh, I did, and you know what's funny? Because it was like this last year, and I, I'm not going to say it is yet. It's just the first draft class. But I have the draft class. Um, I don't even, is it under sliders? I think, no, it's gameplay. Um, it might just be under rules. Let me scroll down here. Uh, yeah. So, draft class quality and generated prospect quality are both set to low and low. Um, I did that because we already have a lot of added prospects, and I just don't want the league to get too bloated with good players, because a lot of times what happens is, uh, well, there's a lot of things that happen with that, actually. Uh, a lot of good players get left in free agency because teams cannot afford them, and or they don't feel the need to pick them up. Because 88s, for example, like they'll become like third-line scorers, which I don't think should even be possible. I think an 88 is, should be like a first line, second line guy. Like, uh, just depending on the player, really. But that should be like a top six forward for sure. Like, there should be no reason 88 is playing on the third line unless it's like a veteran or like a really, really good team. 
um, like some of them stacked Tampa or Colorado teams from a few years ago, like something like that. But um, yeah, I just didn't want the league to get too overcrowded with good players. I think it, uh, I mean, it's always good to have talent in the league, obviously, but for franchise mode, especially, you know, you want to have those kind of like standout players. And uh, like I said, it's really getting all these added prospects, not over overload the draft classes. Uh, but this uh, Sven shooting guy, uh, right handed, right wing, six foot one. Uh, from Sweden, he is most likely going to be a franchise player. Um, I think Niemann is also generated. I could be wrong. Uh, we got, but yeah, of course, I said uh, James Hagens. Uh, I don't know how to say this dude's name, but he is in here as well. Uh, Ivan Ryabkin is in here. Matthew Schaefer, Schaefer, I should say. Logan Hensler, Porter Martone, Anton Frondell, Malcolm Spence, Roger McQueen, Michael Misa. Jordan Gavin, William Moore. So you, they got all the uh, Charlie Trethaway. They got all the top prospects in here for this draft class. And I think the next, like, what, two or three, whatever you can set the age to. Um, and, of course, uh, Landon DuPont, uh, future first overall pick in this, most likely is going to be in here. He's actually in the game, I think, because he's on uh, Everett, given exceptional status. So uh, that'll be fun to get to, of course, in the future. But uh, this draft class is looking good because I think – um, unless this dude modified, I'm pretty sure Michael Misa, for example, is medium elite. Um, and I think Roger McQueen is as well. So it's just about, I didn't look over every single prospect for this roster and every single player. So, um, uh, which is actually a good thing because I don't just want to know the, um, the potential or everything. The only reason I knew Hagens is because I seen some rosters. Now I don't know too much about him to be honest, but a lot of rosters would put him as high franchise, and I just don't think that would be fair or correct. Um, he probably will be a great player, and I've seen a, you know I've seen a couple clips of him and stuff, but high franchise I, I just don't see. He would have like generate like that's like Bedard. Like you've seen the hype with Bedard or even a Gavin McKenna who will be coming up what next year after this draft. Um, but even then, I, I don't even, like, Bedard, you can make the argument for him. Can I be, like, medium franchise? But I just, I haven't heard, like, as much hype. And maybe because he is at the U.S. developmental program, usually those guys don't get as much hype as, like, guys who play in the CHL or overseas just because it's not, like, a, how do I put it? It's, it's a proper league, but it's not a, it's, uh, I don't I don't even know how to put, put that. But, you know, the CHL is, like, a league it's got a bunch of teams, you know, it, it's it's a little bit different, and the market is different, so, uh, you know, like I said, I could be wrong, he could be a generational prospect that um, I just haven't heard too much about, but I think Kylie is more than fair, you know, he's the first overall pick, that's about usually what you put the uh, the potential for for first overall picks, unless, like I said, it's like a Bedard or McKenna who look like franchise players, so, um, but yeah, I'm kind of rambling about that, but uh, yeah, so we got all the, like I said, all the added prospects are in here. It's a really good draft class, uh, at least on paper here. Obviously, we don't know how these kids are going to turn out. And, by the way, uh, when you get older, man, it is so weird to see, like, draft or, uh, birth year for some of these dudes. Like, they're like, two, like these guys are like 2007, like, which is insane. Like, <laughs> it is crazy to be older than these dudes when you, you know, it's just, it's really crazy. And then when you, when you keep getting older, like, you just hear the, the birth year of these kids and it's just so weird um yeah it is that is just crazy but uh i do want to take a look around the league and then i honestly kind of just want to end this video here because i want to get everyone's thoughts as to uh what everyone thinks we should do with this team um because i honestly i mean i have some ideas obviously and we're gonna have to go forward no matter what but um, I'm curious to know what everyone thinks this team should be. I do. I will say one thing. I do want to contend this year, um, and probably as long as we have Ovechkin, it's kind of similar to what they're doing in real life. It doesn't necessarily make sense in this game, at least. But I think, you know, with the goal chase and everything, I it would. I think, you know, we just try to compete for the next like year or two, and then we completely tear the team down when Ovi retires. Just completely rebuild the identity of this team rebuild you know the whole just the entire franchise i mean we have to because we are gonna once all we retires we're not gonna have that like superstar player like because uh carlson's getting old i mean obviously ryan leonard can become that and i think he's gonna be our centerpiece to this rebuild um but 
you know, Ovechkin's still the face of the franchise right now. I think he deserves to uh, contend for a Stanley Cup still. So, uh, yeah, you guys let me know down below what you think we should do with this team, if there's any trades you guys can think of, or just any suggestions for the franchise mode in general. And, of course, with me not simming any, uh, if there's something you want me to change or, like, restart, like, something that has to do with me restarting, I can do that because we're not simming anywhere. We haven't even done anything yet, really. I've simmed, like, a day to uh, to show you the box scores, so... But yeah, uh, kind of a look around the league real quick. Obviously, Anaheim, big young force in the league right now. They just have so much young talent. Leo Carlson looks like Barkov 2.0. Uh, McTavish, Minchikov, Cutter Gauthier, Zellweger. I mean, these are look. At, this young core is just very promising. Uh, and of course, they just drafted uh, Beckett Seneca third overall too. So they just have a pipeline of young players coming into the league. So they could definitely be a force in this franchise. And of course, my favorite part is that they did officially rebrand back to that old school Mighty Ducks logo a bit, you know, the modern colors added to it, but I think that's fine. Um, but I'm glad to see that new, or I guess refined logo back. Uh, Boston, um, they are kind of in a weird spot, but kind of not. I think they're still a contender. Um, they just seem to like never go away. Like they just seem to always, f uh, find a way to adapt and be a competitive team every year. So yeah, they're going to be, uh, uh, not in our division, but in the Eastern Conference, they're going to be a uh, tough team to battle in the playoffs as i assume they'll make uh and they will be a uh, just a tough team to deal with in franchise because you can see they got like lizel mason Larray, matthew patra the young players coming up pastor next only what uh well i guess he's 28 okay but uh mcavoy still only 26 so uh they're still gonna be good for a while i assume uh buffalo oh, man in real life i just really want to i i'm a my favorite team is the rangers i know i just said ovechkin's my favorite player but uh, my favorite team is the Rangers, but I still want to, I just want to see Buffalo in the playoffs, man. I mean, it, 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 you just feel bad for them after a while. Like, uh, and I like a lot of their players. I love Tate Thompson. I love Dylan Cousins. Darlene just named the captain. Uh, Owen Power, uh, shout out, went to Michigan, uh, my home state. Uh, th it's just a very young, exciting team, but they just, I mean, last year we thought maybe they'd make that jump, but they just didn't have it last year. So, um, They'll be interesting. They're another young team in, in this franchise. I mean, look at all the... I mean, every one of their top trade value guys still are under 26. Or 26 to under, I should say. And they still have that um, non-exact potential. So they can definitely be a really good team in this franchise. But I've also seen Buffalo just be shit like the whole fran for a whole franchise too. So um, just very interested to see how they simulate in this. Uh, Calgary. Definitely a rough time for Calgary. I mean, they do have some young guys like Zane Parekh, uh, you know, Gradeen here, uh, Hunter Brusevich, but um, just the unlucky and unfortunate, uh, you know, I, I think the Huberdeau signing, obviously, in hindsight, has been very rough. Um, he is getting paid, how much is it? Yeah, 10 and a half, and he's been only about a 50-point guy, which is really weird because he was just over 100 points in Florida. I mean... Maybe it did help to play with Barkov, but, I mean, he was still... He still have to be good to put up 100 points. Um, I don't know. I, th I still think Huberto can be a top 20 player again. But um, I don't know if it's a confidence issue. It's, you know, line mates, different team system. I really... I don't know. But uh, we'll have to see what happens there with Calgary. Uh, Carolina. Um, again, another team that's very competitive. They're going to be a playoff team, I assume. And they still have... Uh, a lot of young talent like Seth Jarvis, uh, Nikishin, Nate Jazz, uh, Nadeau, uh, Scott Morrow. So, yeah, they're going to be a tough team in this franchise. I can just already see it. Um, and, of course, their stud, uh, Sebastian Ajo, 92 overall. And on D as well, Jacob Slavin, 91 overall. So, yeah, they're going to be a tough team as well. Um, and, of course, they're in our division in the Metro. So, yeah, that's going to be tough. Uh, Chicago, um, obviously, this is Conor Bedard's team. Uh, high franchise, he is going to dominate this. I just already know he's going to dominate this franchise. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if he breaks a lot of records. Wouldn't be surprised if Chicago is a playoff team very soon, even even though their roster isn't the strongest yet. But um, besides Bedard, they still have a lot of young talent. Korczynski, Levshinov, uh, Alex Vlasic looked very solid last year. Uh, Oliver Moore, Renzel, so, and even uh, Phil Kurdyshev there as well. They're going to be a tough team as well uh, in the West, so we don't have to necessarily worry about them too much. But, um, you know, if we start getting to the finals, this could be definitely a team to match up against in the future. Uh, Colorado, they have been a juggernaut for the last half decade and a little bit longer. 
uh, and they look to reload again. Um, they're obviously going <laughs> to, they're actually going to get, I have injuries turned off and all that. Um, but they're going to get their captain back and, uh, Nechewskin is also going to be playing. So, uh, they're definitely going to be a uh, Stanley cup contender, at least for the next few years. Uh, look, I mean, look at this top three, McKinnon, McCarr, Rantanen, like three of the top 10, 15 players in the league to me, McKinnon and McCarr are top three. Uh, I got, I'll say my top five. I got McDavid, McKinnon, McCarr, Matthews, and probably Pasternak. I mean, you could put dry settle in there. You can put um i don't know adam fox that could just be biased but i think he is one i think he's the second best defenseman behind mccarr um quinn hughes is also up there for defenseman you got panarin um i mean it's, it's hard to make top five there's just so many good players and even moose i mean he could be in there as well so but i mean colorado just in general is going to be a great team uh they have just been dominant got a cup a couple years ago of course but uh in terms of just success I mean, maybe not Stanley Cup, but just in general, just been a great team for the last half decade, a little bit longer, like I said. So, uh, again, in the West, nothing that we have to necessarily worry about until we start making the finals. But, um, yeah, Colorado, very good. Uh, the Columbus Blue Jackets. So, um, I guess before I even get to this, uh, I do want to pay my respects. And uh, just, yeah, just a very unfortunate situation for Columbus. Uh of course, if you, ha if you somehow haven't heard, uh, Matthew Gaudreau and, of course, Johnny Gaudreau from the Columbus Blue Jackets tragically passed away, um, I believe, a month, about a month ago at this point, um, to a drunk driver while on a bike ride. So, um, I mean, man, rest in peace to both of those guys. That is just such an unfortunate situation, such a preventable situation, too. Just, you know, um, I don't even want to really get into that. But, uh, yeah, so they... I. I have a lot of sympathy and a lot of, you know, I'm cheering for Columbus this year. I'm sure the uh, whole hockey world is as well, but just a very unfortunate situation um, for the NHL, for hockey in general. Just, just very, very unfortunate. There's nothing, there's no other way to put it, but um, disregarding that Columbus is a very young team as well. They're kind of similar to the Ducks in my opinion. They just have a ton of young talent and uh, they'll just be on the very, the upcome soon. Um, they have, you know, uh, Fantilli, who looks like, uh, a lot of people said he would be the first overall pick in a draft that didn't include Bedard, and of course he didn't even go first, uh, he didn't even go second overall, Leo Carlson did, but Fantilli looks great, uh, I am really high on David Juracek, I watched him in the World Juniors, and he looked amazing, so, uh, I think he's gonna be really good in the NHL, uh, Kent Johnson, Kaden Lindstrom, Matejchuk, all medium elite as well, so these guys are going to grow very soon, and Columbus is going to be another team to be uh, to be worried about in a few years. Again, in the Eastern Conference, not in our division, in the Atlantic. But Oh, wait. No, Columbus is in the Metro. So, uh, yeah, uh, going to be a tough team to deal with here in a few years, especially. So, uh, like I said, I think it's a good thing, at least for, well, I guess it's just us in Columbus. But uh, hopefully they'll be shittier the next couple years. So that will allow us to hopefully take one of those Metro spots in the playoffs. Uh, Dallas, again, they have been... Well, not again, but Dallas has been knocking on the door for the last decade, pretty much. Uh, they have made the finals uh, in the the bubble year, uh, 2021, right? Or was it 2020? It was either them or Montreal, one of the, the other two years, obviously. But um, Dallas, has they've just been a very strong team for a while. They did just lose uh, Joe Pavelski to retirement, uh, who was one of their top six forwards. One, still one of the best players in the league, I would say. Uh, one of the best face-off guys, just a great veteran that they had, but, um, I think what that will do, though, is to allow them to, uh, use Logan Stanko in the top six, and I am, I am also very high on Stanko, and I think he should be medium elite for potential-wise. I think he could actually be a contender for the Calder this year, because he doesn't have enough games played last year to, uh, to make that window, I believe, I think, what is it, 29 or something? So, uh, I think, obviously, you know, a lot of people are predicting, like, Meech Coffin or Celebrini, but I think Logan Stanko is, like, a dark horse Calder favorite, um, and I wouldn't be surprised if he takes that home in this or in, uh, real life. So, but obviously besides him, they still got some young pieces. Uh, yeah, Wyatt Johnson, of course. Uh, I think he is a future, like, 40, maybe even 50 goal scorer. He had 32 last year, and, uh, he is a, he is a very, very good player. I love watching Wyatt Johnson, but, uh, great group of, uh, veterans and young guys. Obviously got some really top-end talent as well, so Dallas is going to be another very good team. Uh, Detroit. Now, Detroit is a team that has been knocking on the playoff window for a while now, 
and they just missed it to actually us, Washington, uh, last year by, what, a point or um, not even a point or something. They tied, and Washington had the tiebreaker or something like that. But it would be interesting to see if they can make that next step in this. Um, their roster makeup is very interesting. Like I said, it's just it's really just going to be dependent on how they simulate. Uh, so, yeah, we'll see what happens with them. Uh, oh, and I should, you know, obviously they have a ton of young talent too. It seems like a lot of these teams have a lot of good young talent. So it's going to be really hard to us to, that's, well, okay, let me completely restart that statement. Uh, I think it's really important for us to build up our prospect pool because we do not compete with teams like Detroit, teams like Columbus, teams like Anaheim, who have just a ton of medium elites here. So uh, hopefully through the draft or through trades, we can actually get some young talent onto this team to uh, to really look forward to the future. All right, and then uh, let's move on to Edmonton, of course. They have the best player in the world, Connor McDavid. Another top 10, 5, 3, whatever you want to put, dry style. Uh, as long as these two are playing for the Oilers, they are going to be a great team, or at least a tough team to uh, to uh, just to play, just to pe uh, compete with. Uh, Evan Bouchard is also a very good offensive defenseman. Zach Hyman, a workhorse. Uh, they actually just traded for Matthew Savoy. They already have him on the block in this, so that's interesting. But yeah, uh, Edmonton, they're going to be a good team. I assume in this in this simulation in real life. I mean, they just they were one game away from lifting the Stanley Cup. So uh, yeah, anytime you got to play McDavid, it's going to be a tough matchup. And then speaking of the Stanley Cup Finals, here are the winners: the Florida Panthers. Uh, you know, a couple of key losses in the off season, like Brandon Montour. Um, and a couple others that are slipping my mind right now, but still a very, very good team. Uh, Barkoff, one of the best centermen in the league. Chuck, probably the best power forward in the league. Sam Reinhardt coming off a 50-goal season. I mean, they are still a great team. Uh, another, again, another tough team in the East. That's gonna, <laughs> it's gonna be hard for us. So, yeah, uh, Los Angeles. Now, this is a weird team to me because I think, well, they did make the playoffs two years ago. I, yeah, because. They made the playoffs last year because I think Edmonton has played them in the first round like the last three or four years in a row. But uh, they're they're a very good team. Well, how should I put this? In real life, they have a good makeup of a roster. Um, I know Drew Doughty is month to month right now. I think he uh, had surgery on his knee or ankle or something like that. Uh, so that is a big time. That's their best defenseman that they just lost. But um, yeah, they're a very interesting uh roster for franchise mode i don't know they can be one of them like weird teams that are medio mediocre as you would think teams that simulate really well um or they can just be complete shit so uh they're gonna be very interesting they got some couple of young guys like quentin byfield brent clark um that'll help them going forward so uh time will tell with them they're very they're very uh unique i should say uh minnesota now two years ago minnesota was looking like a like they were going to make the playoffs every year kind of team. But last year they kind of had a step back year. Um, but I think they're going to bounce back this year in real life. I think they uh, they definitely have a good chance to make the playoffs. I'm really high on Kirill Kaprizov. I think he's one of the best players in the league. Top 10 for sure for me. Um, and then Brock Faber obviously just coming off a runner-up to the Calder behind only you know Connor McDavid. Um, very, very good young defenseman. Matt Boldy I think could be a point-per-game kind of guy. Erickson Neck, a very solid centerman. Um, yeah, and I mean, a lot of young talent as well. Maybe not as high end as some of these other teams, but, uh, it is there nonetheless. So Minnesota's going to be interesting, but, um, yeah, I'll be, I'm, I'm more interested to see what they do in real life because they're kind of, or they were a middle of the road team last year, but maybe they can bounce back. I think they will, but time will tell. Uh, of course, Montreal, uh, very heavy fan base for the Canadians. Obviously a plethora of young talent. I mean, look at this top five. Just ridiculous. Um, I think they could be a juggernaut in this series. They could uh, return to form like they were in the what, like the seventies or eighties. Uh, I think it was the seventies. Eighties was like the Islanders dynasty. But I think they could be a very, very good team in real life, obviously, but especially in franchise mode. This amount of young talent is just ridiculous. Um, and then you already got your guys like uh, Suzuki and Caulfield locked up, so you don't have to worry about resigning them. You got Demidov coming in. You got Slavkovsky coming off a sophomore year, right? He's in year three now. Yeah, wow, that's crazy. Uh, yeah, so Slavkovsky had a really solid sophomore year. Lane Hudson looks like an absolute, just I mean, crazy offensive defenseman. He's not the biggest kid. A lot of the, 
offensive defenseman. Okay, yeah, he's only 5'9", at least in this roster. Um, but I assume that's accurate. Uh, yeah, but it doesn't matter. This dude, I seen this dude did like a, a saucer pass from his own end, and it was like over everyone, and, and it was like on the tape. It was crazy, but... Yeah, just a uh, very good young team. I'm going to try to... I feel like I'm taking forever with these teams. I'm going to try to speed it up here. But uh, Nashville up next. Um, you know, everyone thought they should just uh, go to the inevitable rebuild, but they actually made a run at the end and made the playoffs. So uh, obviously they picked up Steven Stamkos, who was the captain of the Lightning forever. Uh, that still looks weird with him on that team. They also picked up Jonathan Marsh. So, so they're going to be a very interesting team as well. Brady Shea as well here. Wow, so they actually made a lot of additions here. But, um, yeah, you still got your uh, your top two guys, Yossi and Forsberg, and uh, Saros and Nett, of course. Uh, I mean, time, again, I think they could be another player. There's a lot of good teams in the NHL right now, but it's just about who's going to take that edge of the other teams. Uh, the Devils. Now, last year, uh, their number one defenseman, Dougie Hamilton, went out for the whole year. And uh, I think, no, Luke Hughes is injured right now. But, um... Yeah, they had a kind of disappointing year. I think a lot of people thought they were going to be a, you know, a playoff, maybe even a cup favorite. I think I, at the beginning of the year, I predicted Dallas and New Jersey in the cup final, which did not hit well. But, um, yeah, they just had a really rough year last year. But as I said with Minnesota, I def, I think more than more with this team, I have more confidence with this team bouncing back. I think Jack Hughes is going to have like a 120, 130 point season, uh, solidify himself as one of the best players in the league. Uh, I think Nico Hesha is a great two-way forward. Bryant is a great line mate for Hughes. A uh, really good pass-first player. Uh, Nemich and Hughes look like two really good young defensemen. Obviously, like I said, Hughes is injured right now in real life. But, yeah, this is going to be a very, very good team in this franchise. I, or in this franchise mode, I should say. Uh, of course, another Metro team to, uh, to compete with us. So that is going to be a tough one right there. Uh, the New York Islanders. I think this team just screams rebuild. I mean, they have a decent roster, but decent doesn't cut it in this league. And I don't think, you know, being a fringe playoff team is going to get you anywhere. I think you have to uh, adapt and adjust. They don't have too many young players. I mean, they have uh, Iserman, you know, that they just drafted. But I just, I, they just ha I think they have to rebuild. I, just, I think a lot of these contracts are going to catch up to them. Uh, kind of like their captain, Anders Lee, like that contract. I think it's only got two years left, so. But um, I guess they're not too bad with contracts. A lot of them are coming up soon, so that's good for them. But I just, I, I don't know. I think these overalls don't really, I think a lot of these guys are a bit more highly rated than I would do, but um, I think you just have to rebuild at some point. I just, this team hasn't done anything. I mean, they made the conference finals a few years ago, but. I just, they're not, a, they just, I, I don't think this team going to stay in the cup right now. I really don't. So, um, to me, I would be rebuilding. But, uh, New York Rangers, obviously, President's Trophy winning team last year. Uh, they're going to be a juggernaut. Um, to start off, at least, very, very good team. Some young players, but, yeah, they're going to be really good for now. Uh, Ottawa, again, a lot of young talent on this team as well. Stutzla, Sanderson, uh, among others, Yakum Chuck looked really good in the preseason, so, uh, they're kind of still rebuilding, I think, I think they need a couple more pieces to really be a playoff team, but, uh, they're looking pretty good nonetheless. Uh, Philadelphia, of course, Matt Vamichkov coming over to the NHL is huge for them, I think he can be a franchise player for them. Uh, they made a, you know, a Cinderella run to try to make the playoffs last year, I think they definitely have playoff potential, but a couple moves away for me, at least for them. Uh, Pittsburgh, like I said, they're in a really similar spot to us, so, uh, I think they need to rebuild definitely, but I understand if they want to compete with the Crosby window, they just picked up Eric Carlson last year, uh, they just traded for Rucker McGordy, they, well, I guess they swapped prospects, it's not really doing too much, but, yeah, interesting, San Jose, team that just had the first overall pick, still rebuilding, lots of young talent, uh, could be good in the future, right now they're gonna suck, <laughs> Uh, sorry if I'm speeding through this, I actually am on a timer right now, but Seattle, mediocre, I would make a couple moves, same thing with St. Louis, mediocre, make a couple moves, Tampa Bay, lost a couple key players, they still could be really good, Toronto, gonna be a really good sim team, can they do it in the playoffs, Utah, kind of rebuilding still, uh, we'll see what the, uh, new team can do, Vancouver, made the playoffs last year, should again, wouldn't be surprised, Vegas, good team, made the, won the cup two years ago, should be good, 
and Winnipeg should be a playoff team, could be competitive league. But uh, yeah, sorry to kind of rush that ending. If you guys enjoyed the video, please leave a like, and uh, I'll see you next time.